Welcome to Journeys Through Sociology, a series of interviews with the Executive Committee of the International Sociological Association. I'm Lale Bebohanyan, and our guest today is Dr. Jaime Jimenez, who is joining us from Mexico City. Dr. Jimenez is a researcher at the Institute of Applied Mathematics and Systems at the National Autonomous University of Mexico, where he also founded the Department of Mathematical Modeling of Social Systems. Originally trained in physics, he went on to earn his PhD in social system sciences at the Wharton School at the University of Pennsylvania. Dr. Jimenez has devoted his career to bringing his training in physics and mathematics to the study of social problems. He's done extensive research on a wide range of topics from education and healthcare to science and technology and he particularly specializes in issues of development and participative planning. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Jimenez. You're very welcome. I think uh, we finally did it. Yes. And I hope we are going to have a very nice interview. Yes, I think so too. Yes, we've, we've overcome some technical difficulties and we're now here. Um, so, uh, Dr. Jimenez, you, you know, you've done very extensive research over the course of your career on, on a really wide range of topics. Um, but just as a beginning, could we start by perhaps, uh, you know, you sharing with us a little bit about whatever aspect of your work that you're currently doing right now that you're particularly excited about? Uh, absolutely. So let me tell you, uh, Two of the branches of research that I have been developing for the last uh, perhaps 20 years or more is on the one hand uh, the concept in, and the application of this concept, concept of development. And on the other hand, uh, alternative ways of doing, uh, of learning and doing research. So. Um, those two topics for me are very, very excited. Uh, the, the one in development is based on the idea that development is the ability and desire of improving one's and others' quality of life with the means at our disposal. So this kind of definition of development gets rid of the question of growth. Growth is not development. Growth is something different. Uh, a, a population may grow, may grow because they become more, more people. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they will develop. The GDP of a country may grow also. However, the development of those people is not uh, guaranteed. So there are two different uh, concepts. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, uh, I've been very interested in research that has to do with the community, that has to do with development itself. So I follow this branch of research on development on the one hand, and on the other hand, what science and technology can do in order to help people develop. And for the past six, seven years, uh, I was very fortunate that both topics converged into one. On the one hand, uh, this topic of development uh, has been studied by, by myself and my, my group for many years, uh, since pro probably 1980. Uh, in a specific place, in a, in a specific play, uh, region that is located in the hills and the mountain range of the state of Sinaloa. Sinaloa, Sinaloa is the northwest state in Mexico. Now, uh, by that time, in order to get there, either you go by plane or you take a dirty uh, road and it took you of the order of six hours to get there uh, by, by this road. Uh, and the situation was rather difficult. However, those people, the parents of the, of the kids there, wanted the children to have good education and wanted to uh, uh, teach them something that will 
allow them to remain in the region. Those who wanted to go uh, to continue studying after primary school had to go to urban areas in order to study. And when they did that, they learned so many different uh, uh, customs that they actually changed their culture. So when they went back, they were looked as aliens, and actually they felt themselves as aliens in front of their parents and the brothers and the friends. So what they wanted is to have local uh, uh, learning that will help them to remain in the town. And they did a lot of work, and they were able to, um, they approach the federal uh, education institutions, and they got some help, not much, uh, in order that they do whatever they thought it was necessary to uh, give their children good education. And they worked very hard, uh, started alternative primary school, uh, continued with uh, secondary school and high school, the rest of the high school, and they were very successful. Uh, have very good uh, community promoters that they produce through this kind of a, uh, of a process. Um, on the other hand, there is a, this, call, this is called a CEJUS for a short name, CEJUS. On the other hand, there is this organization called CIDE. This is made by professors, university professors with 20 or more years of experience in teaching and research and using alternative ways of doing teaching. Actually, they don't teach. <laughs> That's one of the nicest things. Uh, what they do is to facilitate the student to learn, which is a different thing. And uh, they have several other uh, characteristics that made uh, this, uh, this process of education quite different from the conventional. So this one and this one met together uh, in in Sejus in, in the up on the hills, mm -hmm. and uh, got an agreement in order to work together in order to produce uh, bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees, mm -hmm. um, both inside uh, Surutato, the name of the, of the small uh, town is Surutato, and somewhere else around. Uh, northern, northern Mexico. So this is the, the most exciting research I have ever made in my life, continuing to follow the, the, the different stages of this merge and uh, finding out what beautiful products they have. Nowadays they have had uh, of the order of 10, 12 uh, PhDs wow. and the and the topics of the PhDs are fantastic, are really down to earth, things that uh, really help communities to develop. So, and so, this, you know, and picking up on that, so then this example of the case of Sinaloa for you, that would be an example of development along the lines of actually serving the community's needs as opposed to focusing on economic growth, for example. Absolutely so, absolutely so. What I say is that. Uh, this uh, CEJUS uh, project uh, that has, uh, is primarily in education is some sort of excuse for development, you see. You can take education and make it uh, be uh, the, the vehicle to development for a, a, po a population, for some community. You, you might take as well uh, health or perhaps uh, the creation of a, a small industry for development, as long as you take into consideration the definition I just gave you. Yes. So, uh, you know, Dr. Jimenez, one of the questions I'd really like to ask you, because I know you're, you were originally trained in physics, and, you know, you have training in mathematics and physics. And so in your case, you know, what, what was it that drew you to sociology? Um, could you maybe, you know, share with us a few of the reasons that, that you yourself have been drawn to sociology? Well, certainly. Look, uh, when I stu uh, studied the physics, uh, the first computer came to, to our campus, and it was located in the same building as uh, where, where I studied physics. This so is we the first passed computer 
This is the first computer in Mexico City? It was the first computer in Mexico, yeah. So we, my friends and I passed by and saw those, you know, uh, little lights uh, tingling and things of that sort. Can I ask you what year this was? What year? What year was this? Uh, 1958, 1958, yeah. So we decided to find out what it was. So we entered and uh, we learned that it was a computer and, uh, you know, all of a sudden we already were incorporated into it and learning a little bit of computing. And then after uh, having learned just a bit, teaching computing to the others because there were nobody around. No? So whatever we knew, we were able to teach to others. And that's the, the way uh, my career started in computing. computing. Uh, I finished my, my, my physics and then I entered into the Institute of uh, Geophysics in the Space Physics Department. And I spent in, in space physics of, uh, of the order of 10, 12 years doing research in space and uh, particularly associated with uh, computer simulation. So I was in, uh, I was in charge of producing uh, those um, programs that will simulate, simulate the trajectory of charged particles that came from the sun yeah. to, the, to the earth and then how they came around and some of them were able to, to get into the, the earth as a cosmic race. And uh, I realized, and everybody at that time realized that the uh, computer was a very powerful tool and uh, we, ma many of us thought that that kind of a tool would help to develop our country. <laughs> and that that will solve all the problems, you see. Mm -hmm. So what I did was to detach myself from space physics and to start learning uh, systems that will help me to solve problems of the Earth, of mm -hmm. people, of society, of communities. And uh, so I learned uh, several things, simulation, um, uh, um, statistics and uh, other, uh, whatever, uh, they were called uh, packages, uh, science packages or something of that sort that will help to solve, you know, real Social people problem. problems. Yeah. So one of the problems I, I was supposed to have solved was one in a mint house. They had problems in the distribution of the machines and in the programming. So what did you, what we did was simulate the programming and the distribution in such a way that uh, they may make runs and know exactly how to Dr. program. Dr. Jimenez, I'm sorry, I have, to, I have to stop you because the freeze has froze, the screen has frozen. Oh, here we go. Okay, I'm sorry, we're back. Um, as we, as we, we have these Earth? problems sometimes in, in trying uh, to connect globally. Um, so I'm sorry to interrupt you. Please continue. All, all right. Uh, uh, shall I start or just No, continue? just please continue. Please continue. Okay. So uh, we were able to produce a beautiful program that was able to program the machines, the different machines that you have in the Mint House, to produce coins. And um, so the, the people uh, in charge of the, on the, of the Mint... Uh, we're fascinated. We ran different uh, runs with different uh, parameters, and they took them, and they studied them. It took a, of, of the order of three months for them to understand what was going on there, and everybody was was happy. No? So uh, after six months or so, I went to the pin house and asked them how things were going, and they say, "Well, so so. Uh, have the things improved? Well, not much." Uh, are you using the, the system, the program that we wrote for you? Well, actually, no. <laughs> so uh, I was really disappointed. Why? And then this, this uh, manager explained, look, we have very young workers here. There is another meat house of very old people. And these workers are more educated. They want to uh, get... Uh, how do you say, sindicato, 
um, organized a union. Union. Yeah. Uh -huh. They want to be uni unionized. Mm -hmm. and not only that, but they want to get some profit out of the money that uh, we produce. Mm -hmm. Just imagine to, to take a share of the amount of money that a meat house produces is a tremendous problem. So what they do is to sabotage the, ma the machines mm -hmm. and uh, they sleep on, on them and things, you know, it's very difficult to solve. Right. Okay, well, I was really disappointed. I, uh, at that moment, I didn't realize that uh, hard sciences not necessarily solve uh, mm -hmm. soft problems. Mm -hmm. And problems don't remain soft, uh, mm -hmm. solved. They, they change every time, you see. Mm -hmm. And at the time, Rosa Leikov was in Mexico spending a sabbatical. And I was invited to attend uh, his seminars. And he started uh, talking about uh, systems, uh, social systems, the way they inter uh, connect each other, how things interact, and uh, other things that actually I didn't think of when I was doing hard sciences, trying to use my hard tools to, to solve uh, soft, actually soft problems or semi-soft problems. So I realized that I needed to learn more. Yeah. And then it's when I went to the University of Pennsylvania and spent three beautiful years with, uh, with the people there, in particular with Rosa Lakoff. Right. I, I forgot the, the question. Well, that's <laughs> it's, it's okay because your response has been fascinating yeah. and we've learned about the first computer in Mexico this. and social systems and, yeah. and we've learned a lot along the way. Um, that's, that's the way I, I got involved in social systems. Yes. Yeah. So uh, the other, you know, another question, Dr. Yemnes, that I'd like to ask you is, is about some of the challenges that you faced as a sociologist. Um, and you've already begun to speak a little bit about, for example, the difficulty of, of trying to use hard sciences to solve soft problems. Um, but could you speak a little bit more about, you know, looking back over the trajectory of your career, what would you say are, are some of the most significant challenges that you faced as a sociologist? Well, actually, one of the challenges, you see, I, I changed totally my best, best Sang Chung, uh, and uh, I was now very much involved in people, in communities. Mm -hmm. So I did, uh, while I continued doing uh, field work with people, and one of the main, major challenges you have is how to introduce yourself to a community. Uh, you know, you are a, a stranger, you are some sort of a, a, a body that has nothing to do with a particular community. Mm -hmm. And if you wish to do some research or to help people, actually the, fir the very first thing you have to do is to introduce yourself and be accepted. And that was or, or has been a real difficult uh, challenge for me. Mm. And we have uh, used different uh, techniques in order to, to uh, achieve it. And uh, most of the time we, are, we have been very success, successful in that area. Uh, so you want one, me to one challenge is this issue of, of making connections within the local communities that, that you're attempting to work with. That is correct. <laughs> you do it better. Do you say it better than I? <laughs> now another cha challenge. You see, I do a lot of um, um, dynamics, social dynamics, uh, uh, primarily in small groups and then middle-sized groups. And uh, my role there is to be a facilitator of things that those people have to think of believe of and then develop themselves, carry out themselves, you see. So the role of facilitator obliges you not to in, get involved in the, in the substance. You, you, just, you are just there in order to help things happen. But you are not uh, in the role of an advisor that will say what those people have to do or things of that sort. And sometimes you realize, oh, these guys are going in the wrong direction. And then you have to refrain yourself in order to know, uh, in, in order not to interfere in the natural dynamics that those people are taking. Mm -hmm. so, 
that's another challenge. That's an important one, yes. Um, so attempting to, to facilitate as opposed to taking a leadership position and, and, and essentially telling people what they should do. Th that yeah. is correct. That yeah. is, that's better put. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Another challenge, actually, is to be patient. It's, you know, in all this work, you really have to learn to listen. And sometimes I lose my temper and I introduce words that I shouldn't or I interrupt somebody, you see. Mm -hmm. But that's, that, that kind of challenge, you have to work on it all the time. Yes. Yes. That's three challenges. If yes. you want more, let me know. Yeah, no, and I imagine the, those challenges that you bring up are ones that, that many sociologists struggle with in different kinds of ways. They seem quite universal in a sense, um, attempting to you know, serve communities without, in a way, taking over what the dynamics of that community itself, as you say. Um, yeah. So, you know, our time, unfortunately, is, is, is running short, Dr. Jimenez, but there is one last question that I really would like to ask you. Um, so your own career is, trajectory has taken you, you know, from physics to social systems, sociology. Uh, when you look back on that trajectory, if you had not become a, a sociologist or a social scientist, is there something else that you would have liked to have pursued? Well, uh, let me tell you, I had a lot of trouble in order to decide what I was going to study, but terrible. Um, after finishing high school, actually I, I took high school geared towards medicine. And after I, I finished, I realized that uh, medicine was not my thing, and I entered to f in physics, so I had a very bad uh, problem of uh, time, you know trying to overcome all that information, all that uh, uh, knowledge that I didn't have in physics and in mathematics. But I was able to overcome all, all those things. And uh, so I'm some sort of uh, unquiet person. If I didn't study um, physics, probably I would have studied um, something uh, related to research that could have been biology, that could have been um, perhaps law, even law. But I, I, I think I had the vocation of uh, dealing with people and of uh, trying to be helpful to, to, to people, to communities. And it sounds like, you know, in the sense that it's research that you're interested in, you see research as a means of, of helping people, of, of addressing, of solving problems, in a sense. Helping to solve problems. Helping I don't solve. solve problems. Yes. I know I don't. Because <laughs> we try to help solve problems. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Well, Dr. Ivanas, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. It's, it's been a really wonderful having you. We really appreciate it. I really enjoyed uh, our conversation, and I'm very, very happy that we finally made it. Yes, yes. <laughs> we've, we've gotten through all the technical problems and, and, and done it, and we appreciate all the time you've invested. Thank you, Lali. You're very kind. Thank you. This has been another journey through sociology with Dr. Jaime Jimenez. We look forward to next time when we'll be joined by Dr. Ishwar Modi from India.